doing it, he wasn't really. So we have started the recording now. Yep, recording has started. So. Come on, you can do it, computer. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, <laughs> um, I'm trying a new thing this week. Um, so you'll see on the PowerPoint that they are automatically subtitled. I don't know if that's helpful or just annoying. So you can let me know if uh, you want me to keep it on or turn it off. Uh, It'll be quite interesting I, to see how it misinterprets your accent. Yeah, it's quite fun. That. Um, Teams does have, actually I'm not doing this on Teams. For those of you that didn't know, if you use the three dots on Teams, so there's a three dots menu, drop it down and there is actually an option there to turn on live captions. Um, and in fact, I'm not sure what version we're on, but for some of them, it will actually try and auto translate as well. So if you prefer to see your subtitles in Spanish, it will try and do that uh, as I speak. That's the Teams feature that you can turn on. That's not what I'm doing here. Uh, this is actually in PowerPoint. PowerPoint uses the same kind of technology to try and subtitle as I'm as I'm presenting. AI will absolutely be the end of us. It will take over shortly, I'm quite sure. So, only 26 minutes after we started, we might actually get some information going. Um, remember last week we spoke a wee bit about data. And someone asked the question about, well, if you have, is something bigger than something else or the same as something else or less than something else, doesn't that suggest that you can do something with it? And of course it does. It suggests that you can select. And that's what today's lecture is about. It's about selection. Up until now, what we've been doing is typing in commands and each of them follows one after the other. So it does one thing, it does the next thing, it does the next thing. The fancy name for that is sequence. So the instructions are executed in sequence, one after the other. But life's not like that. We don't tend to um, do things in sequence, we make choices. And again, the fancy name for that for programming is selection. So instead of doing one thing after another, we have this idea here that we have a branch. If, and then there's a yes, look, a, a yes line and a no line. Hang on a wee tick. Hello. Thank you, Idris. Thank you. Service with a smile. Yes, room service. She likes to think of my of being my daughter. I like to think of her as being my slave. <laughs> she doesn't like that. So, um, so we've got selection. We make a choice with this if up here. And if something's true, we do one set of things and if something's not true, we do another set of things. 
So not surprisingly, we've got some code. <laughs> Waitrose, do you know I think I've ever been to Waitrose in my life? Despite being an Ayrshire snob, Jen, I'm not even sure we got a Waitrose in Ayrshire. In fact, I'm pretty sure we don't. Well, definitely not one in Troon. Sorry, I couldn't make that out. There's definitely not one in Troon. Yeah, I don't think there's one near me either, so. It's a Sainsbury's in Troon, isn't it? Big Sainsbury's, is it? No, Morrison's. The most expensive Morrison's on the planet. Is it? That's the one down at the shore. Yeah, that's the one that's had about five locations in the town so far since the 70s, showing that age. Yeah, I, I don't really go to Troon. I'm, I'm from further up the coast, so they kind of run me out with pitchforks and burning and burning torches. And I can't believe you're calling anyone a snob when you live in Troon. But anyway. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Back to the programming. So we're doing selection. So we looked at Boolean stuff last week and we said, is it greater than, is it less than, is it whatever? So we get this output as you identified last week. Um, it gives you an output, a yes or no, a true or false, a Boolean output. And we are going to use that to write some code to go along with it. So here's the idea. We have a ticket application. You go in, you buy two tickets and it calculates two tickets at eight pounds are 16 pounds. By the way, did everyone have a look at the code tab on Teams. No. I sent out a message pointing out that there's now a code tab in the Paisley Labs channel. Basically, it's an interface similar to this one that I use, but it's in a tab on Teams. And actually, it means if several of you want to code together, and play around together. It means you can go online and it's got a command line interface and uh, you can do stuff and it'll print. I don't know why I'm telling you rather than just showing you. So if you haven't looked yet, on Teams, in our team, in the Paisley Labs, up at the top, there's a thing called code. Which takes a wee second to initialize. And I can't remember how I did it before. Oh, there it is. This is going well so far. OK, so we've got Python, we've got a coding editor. We can type in stuff. Someone else is doing it. Who's doing it? Pablo, is that you doing it? No. It actually did come up there with who was doing it. Last night. 
Tony. Is that you, Maureen? Excellent. I, I did not realise it was going to be up on everybody's screen. You can type in code and uh, run it, and it will work in there. If it had been my code, it would have run properly, but because it's Maureen's, you know, that you can do. So Maureen can fix that code. What's she missing? Brackets, but I can't edit that, so I can't fix it. Well, you can, because what you can do is you can start inviting people. So if a couple or three of you want to get together and actually work through some of these things together, you can do it online in this, at least as long as we're just using a, a fairly simple text editor. So you can play with it anyway. It's um, available if you want to do stuff with it. In the meantime, I'll go back to this because what I wanted to do was actually start writing a ticket out. So Okay, what have I just done? You made, made a variable. Yeah, that. Made a variable and? It's now eight. Say that again? Ticket cost is now eight. So we've set up a variable called ticket cost and we've assigned it the value eight. And we can just confirm that. OK, so we've got a ticket thing and it's talking about how much it costs. What we really want to do, I suppose, is instead of having just a, a basic cost like they have there and printing it out we want to perhaps make some changes there might be for example cheap tickets for children so we're going to need to get an age. How are we going to get an age again? What kind of code are we going to need? Input. We need an input. Oops. Like that. You you can in store a string and age and this to be an integer. So yeah. how are we going to make it an integer? And input. We need to use our other function. So we're getting the input and once we get the input we turn it whoops. We turn it into an integer with the int function. That better? Is that right? Jack, you're right, yep. So we've now got a ticket cost and we've got an age and we can test on it. Not surprisingly, it's if. Keep it nice and simple. If the age is, and I've forgotten what we said we were going to do, under fives go free, okay? If the age is less than five, Wouldn't it be less than or equal to? Good question. Should it be less than or equal to? There's I mean, it said under it five, so. Under five, so not five. 
if, so if you under ask, five. So if you're five years old, you don't get it free. So it shouldn't be less than or equal to, but it's still a good question to ask. When you're doing these kinds of things, the edges are where it always goes wrong. Do we mean five and under or do we mean under five? So you're right to ask the question, you check, but I think this time it's correct and it should be less than five based on what our spec says. And our spec says under fives. So it's actually sense? people of age up to 4.49. Well, 4.99. But it is I mean, an like, integer. But like where, where do we start rounding? We don't. You have four until you have your fifth birthday. Well, I mean, I suppose babies sort of talk about I'm 26 weeks old. I don't know, Nicholas, do you still tell people you're 18, 24 weeks? Well, no. OK, so you tell people you're 18 or whatever age you are. Yeah, but so, like if it's if it's about like, well, you know, getting a ticket for free, I might as well be five years old and or four years and like 44 months old or something. Nicholas, I can see your face. Nobody's going to believe you're four years old. God damn it. <laughs> we'll leave the um, the sleuthing to the people who are selling the tickets. For the moment, we'll just say, what age are you? So if age is less than five, change our cost. We are going to say the ticket cost becomes nothing. The ticket cost isn't always nothing. If it's not nothing, it's going to be our original Does that code look right? Does it look OK? By which I mean, can you understand what it's trying to do? Yeah. Yes. OK. Yeah. yeah. So let's see what happens when we run it. Mohammed, trust me, I'm getting there. Syntax error, invalid syntax. OK, remember I said right at the start that you're going to make errors, that you're going to do stuff and you'll be missing brackets and quotes that you've already done, I'm quite sure. Here's one of the other ones that you're going to miss. Wouldn't you need a variable? Here, you need a colon. Because you do. That's the way the language is written. So when it's said there, invalid syntax, syntax is how the language is written. Invalid means it's wrong. And the way it's wrong is because we've missed out a colon. OK, so we'll fix that. Let's run our program. Rats. Else, syntax error, invalid syntax. So same kind of idea, as well as on the if line, on the else line, you also need a colon. Oh, that's better. It's asking for the input. So I'm going to say I am, as you can clearly see from my picture, And it's telling me my ticket cost is eight pounds. If I am like Nicholas and I am, then I get my ticket free. So we've got some selection. Remember I said that um, you want to make your code so that people can read it. So we use variable names that we understand, ticket cost, age. We also use things like this, white space. So I can see very clearly 
which bits come under the print, uh, come under the if? So I can create lots of statements, all of which come under the if. I do have another issue though. Indentation error. Unindent does not match any outer indentation level. Oh, how do I want to take a shot? Any thoughts? It is because I print there and it doesn't recognise the code below. Any uh, suggestions why it might not recognise it? Maybe because of a difference in indentation. Like, is it if we move it to the left, is it going to read it properly? Find out. So you want the print to go to the left? Oops. Oh, it doesn't want to go to there, so you want it there? Uh, yeah. OK, let's try that. See what happens. No, nope. now it expects an indented block. Is it because the print you're asking it a question and the print doesn't un make sense in the question you're asking it? No, because all that's happening is we're putting in statements. So the statement can be anything It is to do with the indentation. They have to be in line with everything but the ticket costs that are under the if statement. Kind of. Python uses the indentation to show which bits belong to certain parts. So, for example, if this was in Pascal, it would look kind of like this. We would have the if statement and we would begin what we wanted if the if statement was true. We'd have our statements and then we'd say end. So it would use the begin and end to bracket the statements that we want to happen within that if statement. Python doesn't do that. Python actually uses the indentation itself to show what comes in, what statements are going to be run within that if statement. And as William says, if it was C, C would use something like this. Use braces to show which parts belonged to F. So it's just a way of showing which ones are part of that F statement. They need to be there. It's part of the language designation. I got away with it first time because I did two spaces to indent. So it worked happily. I did that just to show where the thing was. But actually, Python needs it. And again, it's one of those things. I think it will actually work if I set them both as two. Actually, I can't remember. Let's find out. Yes, it will. Or if I set them both as four, but four is the default. I don't know if you noticed, but when I hit return, it indented automatically four spaces. So 
So the default for Python is to indent four spaces. And that signifies which bits of the belong with each part, either the if or the else. Make sense? Uh, makes sense to me. Any questions on it? Uh, we can use also tab instead of uh, four spaces. Sorry, can you speak up a wee bit, please? Yeah, uh, we can use the tab button instead of uh, four spaces. Absolutely. And if you use the tab button, what it will do is put in four spaces. OK. And you'll find that if you're in PyCharm or something like that, it will automatically indent. Any other questions? OK, so there's a few things to remember. Enrique's quite right. There are two types of people, four spaces or tab people. Uh, kind of like the camel case or underscore people or that kind of stuff. Um, there are different schools of thought. I've got the way that I like to do it. Enrique of the way he likes to do it. And the company you work for of the way they like to do it. But make sure you're consistent, whatever you're doing. Oh, Nicholas has formed his own gang. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness we're not on campus. There'd be fights. OK. Any other questions about that? So don't forget the colons. Don't forget the indentation. And don't forget Roland who thinks that underscores are a good thing and is therefore just weird. Scott's got it right. Scott's passed already. Scott, you don't have to even submit anything. I'm just going to pass you just for that. Well, he can hold you to that now because this is recorded. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. Please read the small print. No salesman will visit your home. And I may have been lying. I'm actually with Jen. I hate underscores just because of the effort involved. Having to do a shift and then to get the underscore just always struck me as far too much effort. And I know that you have to press shift to get an uppercase, but it just felt easier somehow. Anyway, so colons, indents. Everyone happy? Yeah, I'm good okay. with that. What was that? I am good with that. OK. Underscore seems easier to read. I see. Everyone's different. I think partly I like camel case because I'm used to it. Um, and I know you'll find this hard to believe, but actually when I was learning to program, putting an extra character in was actually quite a big deal. I learned to program on a computer that had 1K of total memory. So that's for operating system, program, memory, variables, everything. 1K, 1024 bytes. So if I put in an extra underscore for a variable name, it made a difference. Camel case, on the other hand, meant that I could cut down on the number of characters that are used. I realise it's not a big issue now. Um, I've got more than 1K of a buffer in my keyboard these days, but you get into the habit. And Nicholas, I am very sarcastic and passive aggressive, so maybe that's why I like it too. OK, so we've got some selection. We've got an if and an else. I never got to use the BBC computer at school. 
It was literally locked in a room and there was only about three people in the school who were allowed to access it and I wasn't one of them. If you're at all interested, go look up something called a Sinclair ZX81. OK, so we have an instrument. We have statements that we carry out if the condition is true and statements that we carry out if the condition is false. So what if we want to do more things? What if we want to extend those bands? What if you're not a toddler, you're a child, and you want to put in something else? Muhammad suggests ELSIF, and it's kind of an ELSIF, but in Python, it's actually concatenated to elif. We said that we we're going to give a two pound ticket. The question now becomes, what is the test that we're going to do? So, discounted ticket price of two pounds for five to 15 year olds. What test do we need to do on age to get that? And I would much rather talk about Manic Minor, not that I could ever afford a Commodore Vic, but what test do we need to do on the ELIF? You could be like, if the age is more than 13. Is greater than 14, did you say? Or, you know, whatever. Yeah, 14 works. OK, let's try it, see what happens. Man, invalid syntax. How do I fix that? Colons. I forgot my colon. I'll also stick with consistency. Nobody pulled me up on only having two spaces. So, LF age is greater than 14, ticket cost two. So, enter your age. So, Goodness of the hearts, Ticket Touter offers a discounted ticket price of £2 for 5 to 15 year olds. So let's say I am 15. Your cost is £2. Excellent. It works. We're finished, right? No, it includes 15 year olds. It has to be 50. Less than or equal to 15. Oh, I think you're wrong, Jen. Look, we could go and I could ask again. I could say I'm six and it will work. Oh. Oh, man, Jen was right. My whole worldview has just collapsed. So what have we done wrong, Jen? It's uh, equal to 15 less than or equal to. I think. 14 was never going to work. I'm not quite sure how we got to 14 when we were talking about 5 to 15 euros. Uh, when I suggested that, I never really lo uh, looked at the question. Uh, I just oh, I just said something. Yeah, yeah. So it needs to be greater than 5, but we less than or equal to 15. Before I, before I make those changes, can we just ponder the whole idea that you answer a question without actually checking to see what the question was. Hey, I was close, wasn't I? No, you weren't close. Well, you weren't close at all. Because in programming, there is no close. There is no, oh, well, it almost worked. There is only it worked or it didn't, and yours didn't. And I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm trying to make the point that it's really important to understand what it is you're trying to do so that 
when you get your program going, you can see whether it worked. The other way of checking to see whether it worked, of course, was to do some tests. So I did a couple. I did one at the top end of the range. I did the 15 and I was happy it worked. And then I did one towards the bottom end of the range. And I saw that it didn't. That's part of the testing that you will do. You'll start thinking about what is it that I have to test? So if we've got a question that says a ticket price of two pound five to 15 year olds, you probably want to test 15 and you probably want to test five. But if you've tested five and 15, you probably don't need to test six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. They're called edge cases. So we look for the edge cases and make sure that they work. And in general, if the edge cases work, then the middle cases would work. So the edge case would be would test four and five. The edge case would be would test 15 and 16, where it moves into a different one. Right, sorry, Jen, what was it? If age? Greater or equal to, uh, sorry, yeah, greater or equal to five. Greater than or equal to five. OK, oh, I don't Let's know how you put the. 16 age range. OK, let's try six. OK, it's working so far. Let's try our next edge case, which is at 15. Perfect. Let's try our next edge case, which is at 16. So close. Needs to be less. So it's giving us two pounds no matter what, as soon as we get beyond. So do you only need to put in, so you, you would just need to put in the upper age and it would go through them. So it would already know that if you were under five. So less than or equal to 15. Or under 16, which is the same thing, but possibly easier to read. Yeah, and you, to answer your first question, exactly right. We have here not just two choices, we've got three, but it will still only choose one of them. It won't go back and redo the others. So if you're less than five, it will do this one, but it won't do this one or this one. If this one doesn't work, it will check the next one. And if this one works, it will do this one, but not this one. The only time it will do this one, the third else, is if the if or the elif are not correct. So it will only choose one of them. It won't do more than one. So again, we can try it and we'll try it with our edge cases again. So we've got four. Good. Not charging anything. Five. Two pounds. Good so far. Next edge case, if I look back at my question, five to 15 year olds. So my next edge case is 15. Good, still two pounds. And the next edge case, 15 jumps into 16. Excellent. It starts charging eight pounds. Does everyone understand that code and how it's working? Do you have any questions or any comments on it? Nope, all happy. You've all gone very quiet and I don't know if that means you're all happy or you're just so stunned at what we've managed to achieve. Can you stack multiple LFs? Yes, you can. If you 
could put something like this. So you could start to put levels in there. And here, if you are 16 to 20, I get charged a fiver. What would happen if you did use elif instead of elif? Oh, if you used else if instead of elif, would it just not work? No, it wouldn't, because as far as Python's concerned, else if doesn't mean anything. It's the equivalent of speaking go gobbledygook to it. So you have to use the keywords that Python knows about. And you'll see there in the in the editor, the if and the lf are nice and blue because it knows what they mean. The else if has gone black. As far as that's concerned, it's actually a variable. I could do this. I wouldn't because it would confuse everybody, but I could. What do you mean you wouldn't? You just did. Yeah, you've got L stuff up there. Uh oh. What have I done wrong? Come on, did this last week. What have I done wrong? Brackets. Pardon? Quotation. Quotations? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's not, it's not a <laughs> string, is it? Well, you're printing. Well, quotations, it's brackets. It's where it is. So a function needs to have everything for that function in the brackets and actually types another function. So I need other brackets for that too. And else if is a bool, it's a boolean. So if you use a word that doesn't exist, Python will assume it's a variable. You can't just go making up your own keywords. Any other questions? It's clear to me now. OK. So we have ifs, elifs, and elses with colons. We have the statements that are, they apply to indented and we can have multiples multiple conditions if something else if something else and finally if none of those apply what we do otherwise and as we've just shown for the uh, 16 to 20s we can add in extra ones we could add in extra LFs, as many as we needed in order to set the price bands that we want. So we could, could add we in like, as many. Could we like include in an LF statement like something uh, that would recognize if the well, customer in this case doesn't type a number? So like if he types uh, in like if he types in letters, we have to say please enter a number. Not in the LF statement, but you should be doing that. So for example, if I run this, oops, and I type in I am, it's going to get upset. Yeah, could so we, we modify this message? What we can do is start doing some error checking on our inputs to make sure that the input that we are getting is the type that we actually need. We will start talking about doing that because it's a very 
large part of what we do when we create any program. Uh, and by large part, I mean huge amounts of code go into checking that what we are doing is what we need. So checking that we are entering a number. And there's other things that we could be doing as well, because of course, it's not just about whether I type in some text. If someone asks your age and you type in, is that reasonable? No. I'm happy. I, I mean, if you're the big whale or something, yes, but apart from that, no. <laughs> so there's a couple of types of error checking that we're going to have to put in. We're going to have to put in error checking that we're getting the correct type of information and error checking that it's in a range that we think is reasonable. So it's not part of the if itself, it's part of the input. And we will be talking about um, how we're going to do that later on. And so, so Manu, I would also like the captions. Do you want me to turn them off? I mean, we can't see them anyway. Like you have, you no, have the, to. you have the window in front of them. Yeah, it's covering the bottom of the screen as well for me. I don't know about anybody else. Molester, well, yeah, what? OK, I've just turned them off. Actually, if you watch this back on the video, there's actually subtitles on the videos. So you can get it there if you prefer. OK, did I answer all the questions there that you had about those? Did I miss anything? Next frozen. Um, so I guess I would also include like uh, like what we're going to learn in the future, but also include like asking the program to uh, type again if um, like it doesn't recognize one of the values as valid. Yep, we are. And I think we'll start doing that next week, but don't quote me. What did you see? What am I missing? And the subtitles said something like molester, yeah, or something. <laughs> molester, yeah, not perfect. Yeah, OK. OK, so you're happy with that. We have ifs, we have elifs, we have else, and we can do multiple actions depending on where in the conditions we find ourselves. But it will only do one set of those commands. And only if everything else fails will it do the else. OK, all happy with that before I move on? I'm good with that. OK. So at the moment, what we can do is buy one ticket, but we can start to add extra things in. What if you want to buy more than one ticket? What's the first thing I'm going to need to do if I want to buy more than one ticket? Where would you start? Create a variable to store the number, the amount of uh, tickets you need to buy. OK, num tickets. Now what? I'll need to get an input. To get an input. So given that I've got an input, I am going to copy and paste.
when you're doing this, I was just doing a quick copy and paste just to speed us up. When you're starting off, please don't copy and paste. Type the stuff in and use the colours to give you information and use the hints that come up to remind you what things do. OK, so just as you're getting started, type things in just to get used to how used to how things work. OK, so we've got uh, an age, we've got a number of tickets. Anything else that we need to do? Ben says a total price variable. Total cost. What we're going to do with it. You're going to multiply the amount of tickets by how many you want. So the total cost becomes the number of tickets. How do I multiply again? The star symbol. Why have I put that down at line 17? Why didn't I put it at line 5? Because the program doesn't have all the information till the line 5. So we haven't right. gone through the if statements. We haven't actually found out how much the tickets are at that point. So we need to wait to find out how much the tickets are before we can calculate the total cost. And at the end, we won't print out the ticket cost. We'll print out the total cost. But isn't this assuming that all of the tickets are like for children of the same age? Yes, it is. We don't have anything about family tickets or three for two deals or family packs or any of that stuff. At least not yet. Sounds kind of like the sort of thing that you guys can do to make this program better during the lab. Oh God. OK, does that code look OK? Anything I need to change before I test it? It seems fine. <laughs> Said with true confidence, Nicholas. Hey, you demolished my confidence before, so I don't know. OK. Seems how nobody has enough confidence to actually say anything. Let's give it a go. What age am I going to be? And let's 62. make it 66. <laughs> how many tickets do I want? I'm not typing in 66 again because I'm not doing that in my head. Oh, what the heck? 66. Chloe? You wanted 66 tickets for a 66 year old. How much should they cost? Because I'm not pressing enter until we figure out what the answer should be. There won't be an answer. There won't be an answer? No, um, because the number of tickets haven't been. Oh, wait. No, I, I just saw. 528. 528. 66 times 8 is 528. Turns out Chloe meant 66 for the age and not the amount of tickets. It should be 66 times 5. Do you want me to do slightly fewer tickets to make the arithmetic easier? I mean, I mean, it's not going to be less than 16. It's not going to be less than 21. It's going to cost 8 per ticket and we're ordering 66, aren't we? Isn't that the calculation? 8 times uh, 66? Yes, it is. That's, that's 528. My code agrees with you. And that's the important bit. We worked it out first and then saw if the program got it right. If we don't know what we're getting out, if we don't know what we expect, there's no way we can check whether our code works. Are you going to need to do like the data sheet tables to be able to tell like for testing at some point? 
Oh yes. The bane of my existence, thanks. How else are you going to know if your program works? That's why I'm talking about edge cases. That's why I'm talking about knowing what the outputs are supposed to be. Otherwise, we'll have no way of knowing whether this is going to work. But so far, it looks as if it has. What age do you want me to be now? Five. How many tickets? 300. <laughs> so whoever said that, was that you again, Nicholas, is going to have to do that calculation. What's the answer? Yeah, you're all quiet. 600, right? no, 600, it's 600. Uh, six, no. Okay, so on those limited tests, it's working fine. But we'd have to do more tests than that. Okay, so we can add in extra things. We can add in extra selections. We can do extra calculations based on how much the total tickets are. So we can get prompts. We can do calculations. And then we would have to test it by doing one of each. So like I say, at all the edge cases, how much would it be if I typed in? Figure out where your edge cases are in terms of the spectrum of ages. And do all those. So 0, 4, 5, 15, 16 and so on. It would have to be fully tested. Anybody, any questions about that? See, like when it comes to assessments, isn't that if we didn't fully test, I take it would get marked down. Yes, there will actually be parts of the marking scheme that are for your test plan and your test output. Any other questions? I'm good with that. What was that? Sorry? I'm just trying to give positive feedback. I'm OK with this. Oh, OK, thank you. No, I just couldn't hear. All right, so there's no questions. Roland up is absolutely away. The question is, have a look at Roland's comment, and he says the best way to improve it would be to ask how many tickets of each category you want to buy. What's easier for the end user? To ask them what age they are or to ask them how many tickets they want to buy in a category? Which comes more readily? Age. I would go with the second one because that way you can instantly see as the customer which one is the cheapest option. So you could do either. I think age probably does come to your mind more easily. But it's a choice. Like a lot of these things we do, it's a choice we make when we are designing our program. And it's a choice that you'll have to make when you're designing yours. Speaking of which, here's one of the things I want you to do. I want you to design a program for students' marks. So it's anywhere between zero and 100. And depending on what the mark is, you will assign them a grade. And there is the list of grades. OK, so I need you to. Is this create. the lab or? This is in the lab, so this is part of the lab. There'll be a, there's a few more things coming up, but that's, this is one of the things that I want you to do. So we're starting to ramp it up a wee bit. So week one, it probably took you 10 minutes to do the lab. Week two, 20, 30 minutes. Week three, it's going to take you all your lab time and possibly some more outside of lab time. Because remember, the time that we have together is actually only a part of the time that we're expecting you to spend on this module. So it'll probably take more of the lab time. So this is one of the tasks I want you to do in hand in next week. Anybody get any questions about that task? 
Is this on Teams? Yeah. The presentation's on Teams, so you can find the slides on there, yeah. If that's what you meant, Pablo. Ah, I meant like the like this the th the screen you have up there now. Yeah. So all the all the presentations are on Teams and you'll find them, I think, in the files tab in the general channel. If not, That's give me a shout in the lab and we'll find them. See for week three. I think he means. Uh, see for week three. I've done the lab for week three, the like the program already. So is this like a, like just an extension to it? Yeah, it's just another bit. Right, okay. Any other questions about that before we talk about the other things that are in the lab? Roland, you can do it in multiple steps, absolutely. And again, that's a choice that you would have to make. Uh, do we need to do the task while we're in a Teams meeting? No, again, so when we move to the lab, what we will do is we'll start a different Teams meeting uh, for the lab. And I and my colleagues will keep our computers open, but we are there to help you. If your computer's struggling, no, shut down Teams. Um, and only log on, only join the meeting if you need our help. I'll take attendance from the lecture, but I won't take it from the lab. So if you don't up for the lab Teams meeting, that's fine. If you don't submit the lab on assignments on Teams, then we'll have a problem. OK. OK, so that's the that's one of the tasks for the lab. Next week, we'll look at iteration, which is where we do things again and again. And those will be the three main bits done. Sequence, selection and iteration. So before the next class, as part of the assignment, I want you to complete the ticket tighter example. And I'm not telling you actually what completion means. So the things that we've been talking about, the things that people have put into the chat, the suggestions that they've had, see how many of those that you can get done. I want you to complete the marks to grade example. So I want you to write that one as well. And I want you to do the stuff that is on the lab sheet. Oops. Yeah. So the lab sheet has three, I think, three smaller programs to do. So again, uh, a selection, another selection, and then a slightly bigger one. I would suggest that you do the lab things which are easier first. So do the nice two easy ones in the lab, then move on to the question three in the lab, then move to the marks one and finally complete the ticket touter example. OK. And that will kind of build up what you do. Anybody get any questions about that? All fine here. Everyone happy? No questions? When you say comment, I mean actual program comments, not printouts. Actual program comments to save what it's doing. I want you to get into the habit of that. Nice. Any other questions? Nothing just now. OK, 
hang about. I'm going to stop the recording in case anyone has any questions that they don't want recorded. So let me stop the recording. <laughs>